Uh, I'm Steve Wheeler, your host for this uh, part of the conference. I'm from Plymouth University. And um, I know both the gentlemen who are going to be uh, presenting today. Um, later on, we're going to have Donald Clark uh, presenting on um, his aspect. But before then, we're going to have David Kelly, who I'm sure some of you remember from, I think it was last year when he came and, and uh, demonstrated Google Glass live on the, the stage. And some of you, I think, uh, who, who actually took part in that? Did anyone remember that from last year? Some of you, not many, but uh, so it could be new for the rest of you. Um, unfortunately, Dave Kelly is actually stranded in New York because of the snowstorms. And we deliberated about how we were going to get him involved because we didn't want to lose him and he wanted to come across. He's gutted he's not here, but uh, he will come in virtually now, um, live via all sorts of technology, I hope, that, that works. And we're going to bring him up onto the screen now and welcome David Kelly from the eLearning Girl. David, are you there? I am. Good morning. Good morning to you. Uh, what's the weather like in New York today? Uh, the weather is, is cold, uh, but the, the deceptive uh, snowmageddon was, was just that deceptive. I think it was more... more uh, bark than bite, unfortunately. But it was, <laughs> but if it was, it was enough bark to get all the area airlines to cancel all the flights and keep me from being with you today, unfortunately. Well, we're glad you can join us uh, this morning here, and uh, we have uh, around about 100 and something, 120 people in the room, eagerly waiting to hear you speak. So I'm going to hand over to you now. Thank you for being with us. Over to you, David. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, so it's my pleasure. I'm, I'm glad we were able to. Uh, allow me to still speak with you this morning. I, I thank Don and Steve for, for being able to spend some time last day and a half to be able to make this happen. So I'm um, really happy to be able to, to spend some time with you this morning. So first thing I want to talk to you about on this title slide is what we have in front of us, the, um, the, the URL that's in that red box, that bit L-Y URL. Um, that URL, which I'll show again in my, my closing slide, is going to take you to a blog post that I put together related to this session. Um, so everything that I'm working on, uh, everything that I mentioned today in terms of resources, plus a lot of things that I won't do as of yet, uh, that I probably won't mention, uh, that, that add to the conversation, is to uh, will will be included in that blog post. So any sort of resource that I mention, any sort of report that I mention as I go through the, the presentation this morning, will be available on that URL. So uh, you don't have to worry about writing down anything that's on the slide. The slides will be on that uh, there as a resource as well. Uh, so and I'll show that URL towards the end. Uh, so as you can go to the next slide, please. So just to add a little personality to the disembodied voice that you got, this is me. Uh, my name is David Kelly. I am the program director for the eLearning Guild. Uh, I am embedded daily in the world of learning and technology. Um, finding out what's next and what it could could mean for our field of learning, uh, and wearable technology is one of the, the biggest areas in that space right now. So I'm thrilled to be able to talk to you about that. And we can go to the next slide. Uh, now, this this idea of me not being there is a little different, um, so, but I do want to make this as interactive as we can under the circumstances. Uh, I do on another screen have. Twitter open, uh, and then monitoring to see if anyone is tweeting anything. So if you have any questions or anything, I please do feel free uh, to put it out on Twitter. Just use my, my uh, Twitter handle, LND Dave, and uh, I'll be looking at that as I'm chatting. And if I see any questions come through, I will embed an answer into the presentation as well as the time that we might have a lot of at the end. So just keep that in mind if you have any questions. And we can go to the next slide. So I just have a couple of disclaimers before I get into the meat of the presentation. Uh, the first one being that this session is not really going to be about how people learn using wearable technologies. And we can go to the next slide. The session is also not going to be about what wearable technology has an effect on how people perform. Uh, we have a tendency within our field to take new technologies and embed old methodologies into them. Uh, and when we get a new technology, we need to change the viewpoint for which we look at it. So if we can go to the next slide, what this session is really going to be about is not the way people form, not the way people learn, but the way wearable technology is going to change the ways people live and work. And that's the lens through which we have to be looking at wearable technology. 
And to give you a little context around what I mean by this idea of how people live and work, I want to share with you a story. If we can go to the next slide. Uh, this is a picture of me and my family on a typical Kelly family vacation. Um, we did this all the time with our family, uh, as you probably did with yours. Uh, and when we, wherever we went on our trips, we always basically had the same sort of a same sort of a, a structure around planning the vacation. If we can go to the next slide, slide eight. And one of the things we always did is we made our plans. And making the plan for what we would do on vacation involved going to a, uh, a travel agent because we didn't have access to the information about all the hotels and airlines. We, they gave us their expertise, showed us, gave us suggestions, and basically made our plans once we made our decisions. Another thing we always did, if you can go to the next slide, is we took a lot of pictures. And my mother loved those Instamatic cameras. Now, now for those of you that might be younger in the crowd, um, this did not have a screen on the back that showed you the picture that you just took. It had something on the inside called film. And film was, was a mystery because you, you took the picture and you didn't know what it was exactly that you would get until it was developed and it came back uh, as compared to that instant gratification that we're used to <laughs> seeing now. Uh, another thing that we did, if you go to the next slide, is we planned our route. And if there was driving involved in one of our vacations, you can bet that at some point in time, um, usually that point in time where my mother's frustration reached a point that she said, would you just pull over, you would have this image going on in the car of my father with the map trying to figure out where it is that we, were, we needed to go. Uh, and if we go to the next slide, another thing we always had to do when we went on vacation is we always wrote a letter to my grandmother and my grandparents to just kind of say what we were going, even... You know, I remember as a very young person, six, seven, saying to my mother, we're only going away for two days. By the time Grandma gets the letter, we'll be home. didn't matter. We had to do that. Uh, and it was just sending that postcard was always part of it. And if go to the next slide, those pieces of the equation were always part of every trip that we ever went, no matter where it was. We, we made our plans. We, we had planned our route, took pictures. We always wrote letters. Uh, and that's just the, that was just part of the way we lived when we went on vacation. And if we go to the next slide, Technology has changed how that is now, um, where, whereas we had all of the things that we did, we still do now. But the plans, I don't go to a travel agent. When I was, when I was making my plans to go to London, I did the entire thing on my phone. Um, if I need to know where I'm going now, again, I pull out my phone from my pocket. Pictures, the world is, is, is selfie-obsessed, and we take pictures instantly with our technology. And now I still keep people up to date when I'm traveling, but I do it instantly via email. So. It's in, we, how we're still doing the same things, but it's evolving, and how we interact with those things has changed through the technologies that we're using. So we can go to the next slide. And my point is, as we have this discussion, is we have to realize that the technology's impact on how we work and learn, technology is not changing the way we work and learn. Technology is changing the way that we live, and learning and work are going to adapt accordingly. And that's the lens through which we need to be looking at wearable technology. So we can go to the next slide. And now, we so what does wearable tech have to do with this idea of learning and performance? How are these things going to impact us? We can go to the next slide. I was involved, as Steve said in the intro, in the Google Glass Explorer program. And one of the things that people always said with this when I was wearing this is, it's ridiculous. You look like a fool. Um, and this technology is not something that an organization could ever use. It is, it is it, you look like a cyborg, it's, it's, it's not really effective, the battery life is this. Uh, there were all a, a, a whole platitude of list of reasons as to why this technology wouldn't work. And in fact, if you've been following the news with Google Glass as of late, you'll, you'll read that it's, it was recently can uh, the, the Explorer program was recently canceled. And all the news around Google Glass was that it was a failure. My opinion, nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, Google Glass, if you looked at it through the lens of a consumer product like you would an iPod or an iPhone that is meant for people to buy and mass consume, then yes, through that lens it would be a failure. But if you look at it as what it truly was, which is an experiment of new technology, then it was highly successful. Experiments don't fail. Uh, experiments generate data through which learning takes place. And that's really what Google Glass was. We learned a tremendous amount about the power of wearable technologies and head-mounted technologies through the Glass Explorer program. And 
this was not something that the people say we can't use this technology, technology like this, Google Glass being an example for learning. They're completely wrong. And if you want to draw a comparison to that, you can go to the next slide. We set up about, about the first mobile phone. We had this big brick phone. It didn't really work that well. You had to scream into it like a fool in order for the other person to, to hear you. Um, but if it wasn't for that ridiculous brick phone, we wouldn't have the smartphones that we have in our hands today. And that's the lens through which I look at Google Glass, is I don't think Google Glass is, is, is going to be something that is going to change the world as we know it, but I think that we'll probably look two, five years down the road as technology that's in Google Glass shrinks into the glasses that many of you are probably wearing right now. Um, we'll be looking back at Google Glass and saying, you know, if it wasn't for glass, we wouldn't have this technology that we have today that is a game changer. Uh, and, and that's the first real implementation of Google of uh, wearable technology in a, in a way that is affecting the masses that we're seeing. So keep that in mind that this technology is in its infancy. It's like this mobile phone. It's in its infancy. It is going to evolve at an insanely rapid pace. Um, the, this, is, this is an industry, wearable technology as a consumer industry did not exist two to three years ago as a consumer industry, and it's expected to be a multi-billion dollar industry in 2015, partly powered by the um, unveiling of the Apple Watch later on this year. So we can go to the next slide. So settling in a little bit of a baseline as to what wearable tech is in the first place. You can go to the next slide. Well, first thing I would say is this is what most people think of when they think of wearable tech, Google Glass, because it's the most public version of it. It is something that has been out there um, in the public view that people have seen and looked at strangely, uh, which I can say for a fan. When you walk around with that, people do look at you strangely. Um, but wearable technology is so much more than this perception that it's Google Glass. And we can go to the next slide. Um, wearable technology is going to be everywhere and in every possible definition of what this word wearable means. Some of it will be visible, like Google Glass or, or an Apple Watch. Some of it will be embedded into clothing in your shoes that you don't even necessarily see, but is still serving a very powerful purpose. And this idea of what wearable technology is is going to just explode in the consumer market in a very short term. And we can go to the next slide. And as an example of what that is, I want you to uh, take a look at this chip that's in front of you and, and just appreciate the scale of what it is that you're looking at. What's in that hand is essentially the size of about a quarter, and yet it is a full computer operating system called Edison that is built with wearable technology in mind. You can, you can easily embed this into clothing or, or, or shoes or whatever, whatever idea of a wearable technology concept that you have in a way that it is not like Google Glass where it's sticking out as an obvious piece of technical equipment strapped to your head, but it is just part of the being that you are and looking no different than you are today. And Edison is something that Intel has been working on with wearable technology in mind. If you can go to the next slide. This is one, a quote from Intel's CEO that I think very much talks about where wearable technology is today from a consumer market and also as it applies to learning. Wearable technology is not something that is commonplace today, but we are getting to a point where it is, there, are, there are case studies and um, there, are, there are pilot programs of wearable technology being used to solve real-world problems, that it's not just Google Glass being shown um, in a way that, that it does what your phone does, but it's just doing it in a different way. These are applications of Google Glass that really, really, um, applications of wearable technology that really show problems being solved and in a way that is just part of your being, that it's not interrupting who you are or interrupting the the people around you seeing you use it. That was one of the, you know, people always say Google Glass is distracting as a wearable technology or as a headset. And I agree that it was, but not the perception that most people generally say that statement in. And myself as a user, when I put Google Glass on within just a couple of seconds, it just disappears into my being, which is one of the things that wearable technology needs to do. It needs to alter your experience or, or become a part of your experience without distracting you from your experience. And that was one thing Google Glass did very successfully as a technology. I, as the user, 
could put it on and forget that it was there, just kind of blend it into to my being the same way those of you who wear glasses or sunglasses would. Um, but where it was extremely distracting was the people who saw you wearing it. It was not, there was no normalcy attached to it, and it was a very distracting thing for people to see as you were wearing it. Uh, but it, th- this, is, this is what he's re- referring to here. The idea of having it embedded into your lifestyle is going to be huge, and, and we are going to get there very, very quickly. We can go to the next slide, 23. So I want to talk about some of the applications from a consumer market of, of what wearable tech is going to be and some of the early implementations of it. And I say consumer market because that's critical for us uh, as a learning and performance field. We tend to look at technology through this defined lens of learning technologies and saying, okay, how wearable, how's wearable tech going to be used in the, span, in the space of wearable technology? And in my opinion, that's the wrong lens to be looking at. We need to be looking at what's going on in the consumer market because as consumer market behaves, uh, as, as the consumer market behaves, that's how learning is going to follow. We're not going to define how people behave through technology. We need to understand how people are behaving through life with these technologies and adapt accordingly. So let's take a minute, couple of minutes and look at some consumer applications of wearable tech. We can go to the next slide. Giving you an idea of, of where wearable tech is today and where it's going, there's a tremendous report, there's a link to this report on that URL that I shared with you earlier around um, where wearable tech is and where it's going from, for, from uh, IQ from Intel. And they, they break it down into three specific stages. First being this, this idea of a tailored ecosystem where the technology is enabling a person to connect with a computer in some way, shape, or form. Uh, where it's, it's enabling us to, u- using this wearable technology, connect to computers that are enabling us to interact with the environment in some specific way. And Glass was a good example of that. Um, there are some, some applications of Glass that just through my being and through, through its context, contextual awareness, I was able to connect to computers in a meaningful way. And that's that first era of, of wearable technology, which is going to be launching very soon. Rapidly behind that is the next level of con- this idea of connected intimacy, where this wearable technology is enabling us to connect with others in ways we've never been able to do before. And one of the earliest uh, ideas behind that, for those of you who have been following what's going on with the Apple Watch, is this idea of haptic feedback that, that is embedded into the watch experience. And even something as simple as what they have through, through this haptic feedback and through the Apple Watch that's going to be coming is the ability to use that haptic feedback to connect with other people. So I could literally take my watch and, and tap on it and have that tap felt through the wrist of someone else. Um, if, my, if, if my wife and I both had the Apple Watch, I could send her my heartbeat as a way to just connect with her in another way, or, or you could do that with anyone uh, for that matter, but I, I'd prefer to do it with my wife. But there, this idea of connected intimacy, where, tech, where this wearable technology is helping us as individuals connect more with one another in ways that should, today haven't even been defined. It's that, the Apple Watch example I gave is a very, very uh, rudimentary example of that. And then longer term is this idea of the person as the computer, where the, the, the line between the interface, the individual, the interface, and the computer just blurs away. And the, the computer, the, the data is being literally generated in different ways by the individual and analyzed through the technology where it becomes the, the there is no line between the individual and the computer. Um, some of you have probably seen some, some sci-fi type of um, implementations of, of things on the internet where you know, the idea of Google Glass is implemented through a contact lens and that, that is being developed today where the, what you're looking at through your eyes is being instantly analyzed uh, and augmented re- uh, there's augmented reality straight through it. Uh, so the idea of this person as the computer generating and analyzing data is a, a little bit further reaching in terms of where wearable tech is going to be going. But this is a very, ra- if you, as you'll see in this report, this is an incredibly rapid moving, rapidly moving technology. So we can go to the next slide. So going through some specific examples, um, one of the things that wearable technology is going to be able to give us is 
real-time support. Uh, this is an example of, a, of something referred to as Nursery 2.0, where within this baby's onesie, we have technology that is monitoring the baby. Uh, I have two kids, and I know when they were babies, monitoring the baby consisted of putting basically a microphone in one room and a speaker in another room. Um, we didn't, when, I, when I had my kids, we didn't have quality video even at that point. So all you had was this audio system, and that meant that any time you heard anything even remotely out of the ordinary, I know myself as a parent, that means you got up, looked at the baby, said, baby's fine, and went back to bed. Um, whereas this is now monitoring the baby. And, and instead of a, just a, mic, a speaker in your room, what this device does is it has a globe that has a speaker attached to it. But on the onesie, it's constantly monitoring the baby's biometrics and the condition of the baby. So it's not just responding to the sounds, it's responding to the data that's being collected. And in your bedroom, you have this globe that maybe it's got a, I don't know the exact colors, but let's say it's got a blue glow. And if the baby is coughing, that color sh slowly shifts where you can actually get data through the color that's on this as to whether or not you need to check on the baby, whether it's just normal toss and turning or whether there's something that you need to be aware of. And, and, and audible sounds would kick in if you didn't acknowledge that, you know, that, that there was color changing and, and if there was a, any sort of danger, it would prefer insert a warning tone to make sure that you were responding to it. So giving us much more data as attached to what's going on in a way that is going to be able to enable us to perform better. Next slide. Another application of wearable tech is this idea of recording experiences. Now, the example I have here is Google Glass, um, but the recording of the experience, Google Glass could do video recording, and that was excellent. But when I say recording experiences, I'm talking about a much more contextual application of, of recording experiences. The idea that, um, that the wearable technology is not only just going to be able to capture the video and the audio, but all the context around it, your GPS, um, your motion as you're doing something and how you're performing. The idea that wearable technology is going to be able to measure all of these different types of data and create an experience around that to tell a story is going to be a huge application of wearable technology. Next slide, please. We're going to be able to get responsive coaching. Uh, the example you see here is a vest that a baseball player wears where they are able to see um, in real time how someone is performing, measuring the arm angle of the pitcher and how it's going and being able to say you're releasing the ball a split second too early as compared to where the ideal point would be. Being able to analyze performance in real time and give feedback on how you should, what you could be doing to improve that performance. These are all current day applications of this. Next slide, please. Wearable technology is also going to change the way we, some of the expectations around how we connect and communicate. Uh, the example that you see here is the redefinition of a doctor's visit. Um, so as a as a current example, my, my father-in-law is currently in the hospital for some, uh, some uh, medical procedures that he got for, for his heart, and he has been dealing with delays just through, through that visit. He was in the emergency room when he first went in for about uh, a day and a half, mainly, mainly waiting because the doctor that he needed to see wasn't in the hospital. He had to wait for it to be there, and then that doctor makes a recommendation to, for another specialist to come see him who's not in the hospital, and he has to wait for that person to get in, whereas now the doctor can be there through virtually through these technologies where you have some, someone who's a resident on site wearing something like a Google Glass or whatever the current written edition of that, that adds additional functionality, and the doctor that needs to see the patient is experiencing and, and interacting with that patient through the person who's on site, saving us tremendous amounts of time. Um, this is going to change the way we communicate and connect with, under, with other individuals. So we're going to go to the next slide. Authentication is also going to be something that is tremendously powerful as it relates to wearable technology. The example that we see in front of us here is a, uh, just a simple wristband that does something incredibly useful. First off is, is when, when, you, the, when you first get it, it authenticates to your biometrics so that it knows you. And the second that you put it on and it closes and makes that, that physical connection, it verifies you as an individual. And as long as that clasp remains closed, and it's verified you as an individual, it starts to broadcast essentially a verification signal. 
And what does that mean? It means that the envi- anything, that can, anything in the environment that can read that signal can be automatically authenticated. It could be something as simple as you walk over to your computer and you no longer have to do that archaic control, alt, delete, and put in a password. Now you can, it, the computer just knows that the individual who's in front of it is you and unlocks itself automatically. Or your car does the exact same thing rather than needing a key. Or you could do, as an example here, so financial transactions. Uh, learning implications, this could, in addition to just authenticating you, there could, be, there could be a data record attached to it that shows who you are and, more importantly, what you know and what you don't know, so that when I approach a piece of equipment, it knows my competency attached to it. So that idea of personal authentication has huge implications for learning and performance. We can go to the next slide. Wearable technology is also going to be a control device where we no longer have to hold things in our hands in order to control it. And for those of you that have ever experienced Google Glass, one of the most powerful uh, lessons that came out of the experiment of Google Glass was the power of hands-free computing. The technology that's in Google Glass didn't do anything from a hardware standpoint that that the average smartphone does. And the average smartphone, in most cases, can do those sorts of hardware specifications more powerfully. My iPhone could take pictures and record video at much higher quality than what Google Glass can do. But what Google Glass did and what that that sort of wearable technology enabled was the power of being able to do it hands-free. And that is an enormous piece of potential. So we got the opportunity to control something using wearable technology where your hands are still free in some way, shape, or form is a tremendous application that we're going to see with wearable tech as well. Next slide. Obviously, the implications for one of the more obvious implications of wearable technology is around this idea of augmented reality, and we're already seeing implications of this. Uh, One of the applications, if you have a smartphone that if you haven't already seen, that I recommend you check out is called WordLens. Uh, what WordLens, and that's the example that you're seeing here, does is in real time it recognizes foreign languages and puts them into your language. Uh, it, it, it does, the example here is Spanish to English, and it doesn't take a picture and, or, or give you an audible prompt of what the translation is. It shows it in real time in the environment that you have. It's an incredibly powerful um, implementation of augmented reality, but it was one of the also, almost one of the great examples that I saw of how wearable technology changes that equation. Uh, This is something that's available on your smartphone, but you do have to stop whatever you're doing, take out your phone, open the app, and point it in your hand so that you can see it on the screen. And the idea of just removing your hands and your smartphone from the equation and just having it being ever-present into a set of glasses where it's just embedded into your experience of walking around dramatically changes what that technology means. And in the area of augmented reality, that's going to be a huge implementation of wearable technology as well. We can go to the next slide. Another area wearable technology is is being looked at from a consumer standpoint is in physical restoration. Um, We have devices like you see here that are helping people do uh, who, who have d- difficulty moving their limbs and going through physical therapy and such uh, that provide the skeletal structure that maybe their bo- uh, an individual's body do ha- does not have and enables them to go through the physical therapy they need to continue to develop their, uh, their physical body. Um, but it's a very expensive technology to use uh, and to implement. Through 3D printing and wearable technology, we can do that now as children grow. And, and they, get, they outgrow something, they can just get a new set. So that's going to be another implementation. Next slide, please. And another example of what we're doing is you heard of the Internet of Things. We're also talking about the environmental alignment. Um, we're go, kind of tying into this idea of um, th- that what I mentioned earlier about the bracelet that is authenticating you, the Internet of Things, everything is going to be able to read that signal, and the environment responds to you accordingly. So as I walk through a hallway, um, I could, it could be something as simple as a picture frame or my thermostat that recognizes that I'm in and sets the temperature to what I, what I have told it is comfortable for me or shows a picture that I have identified as something that is, that is appropriate for me, that the environment around us is responding to the technology that we're wearing. So huge implementation. These, these are just some of the examples of how the consumer market is ready to explode around wearable technology and what people are doing to shape our lives 
using this technology. Uh, but I want to take it down a notch, if we can go to the next slide, and look at how this technology could be applied in the space of learning and performance and what we could do there. If we can go to the next slide. Well, the first thing we, we, you can see wearable technology being used, and we're already seeing this through Google Glass, is this idea of narrating our work. And the example that you see here is a surgeon who is wearing this technology while he's performing his task. And in another room is you have inexperienced or less experienced surgeons who are watching this live and hearing the surgeon narrate their work. And one of the things I want, I want to point out with wearable technology that's important to realize is this implementation of a live feed of surgery going on already exists. You have cameras that are mounted on ceilings pointing down at the operating table, and you can see what the surgeon is doing. But one of the things you'll see with wearable technology like Google Glass or any sort of head-mounted live video display is it radically changes the experience because you get the subtle nuances of that first-person perspective. What is the surgeon doing when he turns where are the surgeon's hands when he turns towards the equipment table and gets the next piece of equipment or speaks to the nurse or turns his head? Or where, is the, where is the focus of the, of the of attention that of the person wearing the glass while they're performing a task? It is tremendously more powerful through that. And the idea of just giving someone a device, asking them to record the experience and narrating their work has tremendous applications for learning and performance. If we can go to the next slide. Virtual support. Uh, the example of what we, that we see here is some, you know, it's, we have these, these cell phone towers that are all over uh, major areas now. Uh, it's somebody's job to climb that tower and fix it when there's a problem and do maintenance. Uh, and the last thing you want to do in a situation like that when you get to the top is discover something you've never seen before and have to climb right back down, go in and get a, a paper-based instructional manual from the car to figure out what you need to do. Uh, with wearable technology, we can connect to support live in the moment, whether it be augmented reality that is recognizing what we're doing or providing a live video feed to someone in the office who has all the resources and can research the answer and, and help and coach us through the, the task that we need to perform in the moment. We can go to the next slide. We also have contextual learning. This is an example of Android Wear. The, the next iteration of this that is expected to just explode on the consumer market would be the iWatch, uh, the Apple Watch, excuse me. That band idea where the environment responds. I'm, I'm giving out a signal about who I am and where I am, and the environment responds to me. It recognizes that I've gone into an area, and perhaps it provides some layer of, of feedback of support asking me about the equipment I'm about to use, about the task that might be associated with that area, and responding accordingly. Um, one of the things that is, it is not for, whether it be the, I, the Apple Watch or Android Wear, is a new place for your course to reside. Um, I've already seen the, the use of the term W learning related to watch learning. Um, and, and I'm here to tell you that if you do that and, and you port your course to the watch, um, I, I will find you and, and I will stop you because that, that, is not, uh, that is not what we need to be doing with this technology. We need to be looking at what we could be doing differently and how it changes our experiences. Um, but contextual learning through these devices is going to be enormous. Uh, next slide. Um, Support via data monitoring. We're seeing this a lot in, in the fitness space right now where we have uh, devices that are monitoring us and telling us how we're doing. And that's predominantly in the fitness phase right now. But that's going to move on to specific tasks as the devices are able to monitor more specific movements and be able to coach us on how we're doing and, and give us real-time feedback on how we can improve it. We can go to the next slide. Um, related to that is coaching. Coaching is going to be huge. This is an example of, of a, a video that I recorded while I was driving with Google Glass. Um, and while I was watching, I just wanted, at the time I wasn't thinking of it from coaching. I just wanted to see what it would be like to record an experience that everybody could relate to. Um, and as my wife was watching that video, she kind of looked at it and said, why don't you have both hands on the wheel? Um, you didn't just turn, you didn't check your line spot when you changed lanes. Um, and, and as much as I said in a humorous way, that, that is real-time coaching, that I could perform a task, somebody who's, who, who is an expert can watch what I did and give me coaching on my performance. And that's going to be another very important implication, uh, implication for uh, wearable technology. Another example, voice-controlled computers. Uh, this doesn't look like much in terms of 
this little screen that you see in front of you, but it's a very powerful and meaningful implementation of wearable technology inside of a motorcycle helmet. It's one of those screens that doesn't look like much, but based on where it's positioned in terms of the distance to your eye and the positioning, it looks like a very large screen that can give you a lot of data. And, and you're obviously driving a motorcycle, your hands are on the, the, the handlebars, but you can control it with your voice and, and, and the positioning of your head. So uh, that's going to be another piece of wearable technology that is huge. Next slide. Uh, obviously, we talked about augmented reality. That is going to be an enormous part of where uh, wearable technology goes and another implementation of it. And, and we're going to see this augmented reality piece probably as one of the primary initial pieces of implementation with wearable tech. One thing I also want to point out with the wearable tech, tech market and why I think this is so important for us to be talking about is this is not science fiction. This is not us talking about technology that is going to be here 20 years in the future. Uh, a lot of the stories and, and applications that we're talking about almost have a sci-fi feel um, and, and almost have a, a Star Trek type of, of, of look and feel to them. But these are happening now. And if we can go to the next slide, I want to show you a real-world example of something that is in development today that is going to be changing what we're doing. So if we could just start that video. Exactly. We've been working on meeting <coughs> augmented reality for the last four years. And what we found was that you just can't solve the most challenging problems with devices that are designed for consumers. We needed something that was designed specifically for industrial applications. So we decided to start from scratch and build the device we wanted, the device our customers needed. It was so important that when we made the smart helmet, we considered the user experience, what the worker would see. We had to make a display that was there when we needed it easy to use, and had a whole new interface that was intuitive and just right for the media. And when we were done, it got out of the way, so you could go back to work without distraction. <laughs> this is the first time that all these ideas and technology have come together in a product that can change the world. It combines an array of cameras, so the computer vision sees 360 degrees, an industrial grade inertial measurement unit, so it's resilient even in low light, and a high-resolution depth sensor for precise tracking and alignment. Well, what the Dacry Smart Helmet allows the worker to do is take work instructions and augment data or information right on top of the actual work environment. One of the most powerful features is the ability to integrate live data from existing equipment and to visualize it in the context of the real world. Imagine being able to look at a gauge See what the value is, even from across the world. What if you do it with one and one gauge and automatically log that to a critical system? You can take a device that's completely offline and connect it just by being near it. This is something that has never been done before. It's designed completely from the ground up with augmented reality in mind and with industrial applications in mind. What we really need to do is not just make a device, we had to make revolutionary software. So we created IntelliTrack. IntelliTrack uses a computer vision technology called visual initial navigation to understand the world around you. No matter where you go, it understands the context. You can use 40 anywhere. The smart helmet knows how you move through the space, and it can map the environment and start to create a 3 d reconstruction of the facility. When you have multiple people wearing smart helmets, they share that information, and you can build an entire model of the facility with that combined data. This is the first time a wearable product has had this much computing power. One of the things that we've seen in academic studies around the use of 4D for manufacturing training is that it vastly reduces the number of errors on the first time that someone is performing a given operation. And so Dacry Smart Helmet is the perfect tool for impacting those sort of first time operations. It's actually built with that beginning user in mind. Empowering them to be more effective, to be more productive, to learn things more quickly. And that actually makes the work more important. This idea has been in academia and in research labs for a long time, but has never been built into a product until now. The applications that come with the Dacry Smart Helmet are going to allow workers to do things that they've never been able to do before. Makes them more efficient, more productive, and allows them to really extend their impact.
we feel like we really have a shot at being the next industrial revolution. The Daiquiri Smart Helmet is the future of work. Everyone's looking at me really expectantly. Okay, so this change is coming, and we have to be ready for it, Dave. Is that right? We have to prepare. We have to prepare for it, and the best way to prepare for it. I know you're waiting for something really dramatic. The best way to prepare for it is to play in this space. Dave, can you just explain what we mean by play? Follow it, play with it, see what the experience offers you, and see what you think you can do with it. Very much like we're doing with the Google Hangouts at the moment. We're running six of these sessions in another room just to find out how it works, and each one we're doing slightly differently. That means in June we'll have something new to offer you uh, as a result of the experience we've got.